Thanks very much for joining us. One of the most significant decisions you'll be making when you vote this November is over question one, a proposed constitutional amendment that would, quoting now from what you'll see on the ballot, the question is summarized in this booklet that if you haven't received it already, you'll probably be getting it soon. Uh, question one would establish an additional 4% state income tax on annual taxable incomes of a million dollars or more, an income level that would be adjusted annually to reflect increases in the cost of living. Revenues from this tax would be used subject to appropriation by the state legislature for public education, public colleges and universities, and for the repair and maintenance of roads, bridges, and public transportation, end quote. If approved, it would take effect next year. We brought together two people, very knowledgeable on the subject, to debate this issue and help you get yourself informed prior to casting your vote. They are Steve Crawford, his communications director for Fair Share for Massachusetts. Their funders include the Mass Teachers Association, the National Education Association, and other teacher unions. Welcome, Steve. Thanks, Jim. And also joining us, Jim Sturgios, executive director of the Pioneer Institute, a Boston-based think tank which receives funding from uh, prominent conservatives, foundations, and individuals, among others. Jim, welcome. Good to be here. Good to have you here. So. Let's start off with the basics here. C comes before S, so I'm going to start with you, Steve. <laughs> you feel this is needed. Why? No one argues that we need more money for education and transportation in this state. Our, 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 our higher education system has been divested uh, from uh, over the last 20 years. Kids coming back from the from the pandemic do not have enough teachers in the classrooms. Many kids in, in gateway cities or in schools that are 100 years old. We have almost 650 bridges there that are in desperate need of, of repair. This, these are structural repairs. We're not just talking about potholes. So what, what question one would do would ask the wealthiest in our state to pay a little bit more. If you make over a million dollars a year, you would pay a little bit more. That money would be dedicated to transportation and education, constitutionally dedicated to go to those purposes. Jim, you don't feel it's needed. Why not? Um, I'd ask viewers to think about it um, both in the short term and long term. Um, over the last 12, 13 years, we've doubled our budget. We're spending $53 billion dollars. Last year, our budget went up 10%. I don't think there are that many people in Massachusetts who feel like their, their income has gone up 10% in a single year that quickly. They could have additional revenues they could spend. Uh, last year, we had a $5 billion surplus because of economic growth. Ditto for the year before. We have billions in COVID funding from the federal government has not been expended. Uh, in education, there's a special pool. It's well over a billion dollars. It's not been expended. They've only expended a fraction of it. Um, we um, have the resources to do what we want to do. And in fact, uh, this uh, proposal, while it says on paper, and what you read is exactly how it's worded, uh, the Attorney General herself in 2018 argued that it's just a tax. It's not going to go to education and transportation. That, okay, there's a lot there. Go ahead, rebuttal. Yeah, that's, that right is in. not what was said at the hearing, which the opponents lost in the Anderson versus Healy case. What Judge with Justice Kafka said during that hearing is, yes, it is dedicated to transportation and education. You can go back and check the tape. I, I, I can, it, yeah. it is dedicated. It's no different from other dedicated funds that we have, like the transport, like the, the gas tax, except it's written into the Constitution. It's that there's nothing that can be changed about that. What the, what the justices said is that the subject to appropriation means that voters understand that the legislature can dispose of the income in any manner in which they want to. In 2018, before the Supreme Judicial Court of Massachusetts, the argument from the Attorney General and her written argument says, it, says clearly this is a tax. That's all it is. It's not guaranteed to go to education and transportation. The legislature has the ability to dispose of it. And I would finally say the legislature twice had the ability to earmark the funding to education and transportation. There are two amendments. They voted it down two times, four to one. It's not a small margin. They said go, go, we are not going right. to put it there. Go ahead. 
The court clearly said during that hearing, and you can check the record, that this money is dedicated to transportation and education. There are multiple cases before the SJC that say you can dedicate that money. Now, where that money will be spent in those areas, whether the legislature decides that we need to focus on providing more uh, counselors for kids who are struggling in gateway cities following the impacts of COVID, or we need to spend it on, on uh, improving our colleges, or we need to fix our bridges. That is where the appropriation comes in. But to say it is not going to be dedicated, let, in, I'm not let, finished, in the Constitution to those purposes is, is not accurate and mis deliberately misleading. I, I, com I, uh, yeah, I completely he, agree with he, what he just said on a technical yeah, point. He's technically correct. The money goes to education transportation. But what the court said previously was that there's $18 billion currently being spent on transportation education. The, the legislature is well within its rights to say, you know what, we're going to take some of that $18 billion and move it out and replenish it with this new money. And in fact, that's what the legislature voted on to say, you cannot control on but, how we spend our money, if it's going to be additive or not. They clearly said two times, this money will not be additive to transportation. Voice of the voter that's here. What, that's not what they said. Of okay. course it's going to be additive. Anybody who looks around the Commonwealth sees that we have desperate needs in transportation. If you just try to drive to work, the traffic is worse than it was before. Why did they vote it down then? Huh? It voted it down because, of it, because you cannot write appropriations into a constitutional amendment, and you know that. It was done to deliberate, as a deliberate attempt to get, it, to get it bumped off the ballot again. All right, and let you a, know that. Let a voter jump in here. Can or can't the legislature take this money and spend it on something unrelated to education or transportation? The money raised a by raises. this tax? No. They cannot. The Is that by, true? The money by this tax, from this tax goes to education transportation, but the legislature is fully capable, fully empowered to redirect money currently spent. There's $18 billion. This raises about a billion and a half max. They can redirect that money to other purposes. And that is what happened in California and many other states that have done this. And those two amendments they rejected make it very clear that's what the legislature intends. I'll give you a final word on this, then I want to move on to other parts of this. That argument defies reality. I mean, okay. anybody who lives in the metropolitan Boston area knows that the T is in a state of collapse. The federal government is saying, we need to fix it. Okay. We will spend more money on that. The state is threatening to take over the Boston public schools. They need more resources. The idea that we're going to take money away when we have an additional $2 billion is ridiculous. Okay. It's going to be additive. We'll have time to return to this later on if you gentlemen want to, but I want to get to other aspects of this. Uh, the argument that you're seeing in the TV ads from your side, Steve, is, uh, and it's right in the name of your group, Fair Share, right. that there are these wealthy millionaires uh, who uh, can and should pay more. So let's start with you here, Jim. Why shouldn't people with million dollar plus incomes pay more? Uh, that's, uh, if people want to do that, I think they're well within their rights. I think the, the, the reality of this is that if you look at the data, it was, uh, Mass Department of Revenue data as well as IRS data, the, by far the majority of people who will be hit by this are retirees and small businesses. When you think about a millionaire, you're thinking a, a family that might earn a million dollars on a regular basis. Uh, this tax is worded in a way that it not only includes uh, income taxes we generally understand from your salary, but includes capital gains taxes, um, if you are a small business and you, the majority of our small businesses have their uh, profits flow to your personal tax income, right, your personal filing. Um, and uh, as a result, that's the majority of them, the majority of people are employed by these small businesses, they will also be captured by this tax. As we look at it, if we looked at a 10 year period, people or families who are uh, who are millionaires, quote unquote, for one year of the majority, all right? What that is is people selling, they're selling a house, they're selling an asset, they're selling something. It's a one-time effect because they're getting ready for retirement. The they're majority of what? The, the... Of, of the people who are, quote unquote, millionaires oh, captured okay. by this tax. Okay, That's, all right, rebuttal. That's just not true. That's just not true. The IR, I'll start with home ownership. According to the Warren Group in 2018, there were 100,000 homes sold in Massachusetts. Only 1% of the sellers earned enough on that sale to be impacted by this tax. It was actually 0.06, only 1%. 
You are deliberately trying to scare elderly people into thinking that when they sell, sell their home, they will be impacted by this tax. They will not. When, when a couple sells their home, by the way, I'm a, I'm a 68 year old homeowner on Social Security. I know a little bit about this, right? When a married couple needs to sell, gets to sell their home, they can automatically write off $500,000 off the top. You can write off the new furnace, the, the, the addition, the, 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 the kitchen renovations that you did 20 years. All that money comes off the top. And the people who, who do, that 1% who do make more than a, more than, earn more than a million dollars on a home sale, those are the same people who had their incomes go up massively during the pandemic while the rest of us were just trying to make ends meet. Response. Response is, look, the, I'm not saying it's just home ownership. You're selling your home and that's the only asset you're selling. I'm saying if you look at people who are one-time millionaires in a 10-year period, that is, these are people who have a one-time event. They're either selling an asset, a part of a business, they're selling a home or all of the above to create a nest egg that's supposed to last them for 20 or 30 years, pay for health care, pay for a vacation, pay to help their kids out a little bit, long-term care. They're taxing those people. He can say, oh, homes alone don't do X, Y, or Z in a single specific year. But when you talk about the, the, all the different assets that people sell to get ready for retirement, absolutely. The data is very clear. IRS data and DOR data. On our website, you can see it. We have it right there. I've got to take my break. I'm not, the, I'm not the one who said homeowners. You're the one who said homeowners. Yeah, you also said small said, business people. Yeah. You're trying to scare small business people. I'm not trying to scare people. you. I'm presenting I am a data. small business owner. Yeah. I've been running one for 20, 21 years, God willing, right? Mm -hmm. but, but of all the home business owners in Massachusetts, in 20, according to IRS data, only 3% earn more than a million dollars a year. This isn't a tax on revenue. It's a tax on profit. And you are trying to suggest to people no, that it's a tax. Capital on gains tax. tax brings all of whatever. If you bought your home 20, 30 years ago, you'll see this capital gain we're that accrues. We're talking about small business now, please. Oh, but you're talking about small business? About, I just said, small, we're talking about small business. You just said small business owners are going to be impacted by this oh, tax. Oh, absolutely. But if there's a very small number. Only 3% of business owners in this state make more earn more than a million dollars and all, a very small percentage of them are, are, are s corporations like mine and most of those are in are investors and stockholders okay go ahead so the the fact is that small business owners up to thirteen thousand of them in a single year up to where it's hard to disentangle all of that in a single year can be impacted by this they're the majority of employers they have the largest workforce in massachusetts as they do across the country this is, for example, if I sell an asset, part of my business, and I make over a million dollars, very often, if you look at the data, we reinvest that money back into the, into the business. What this does is creates a disincentive to that. And in fact, many businesses are moving. You've seen in the last year, uh, $2.6 billion leave Massachusetts for other states, low tax states, primarily New Hampshire and Florida. That's six times the amount that was actually moving 10 years ago. This is accelerating, and we are the only state, or one of the only states, I should say, that is thinking about increasing taxes in this way. 25 states in the last right. two years have lowered their taxes. People are competing for businesses. I'm gonna follow so up on that after this break. Uh, if you want to take just a few seconds, go ahead, I but mean, then we'll, we'll I will just point out that Florida and New Hampshire don't have an income tax, so it's, it's, it's just not, uh, it's not apples. It's, he's comparing okay. apples and oranges Happy to in talk terms about of the tax rate. In terms, okay. Say that again? Happy to talk about Connecticut if that's helpful. All right. Yeah, well, you we know can what? talk about New York and California if you want, which is higher than us. Ooh. And so is Iowa and Minnesota and, and let's, New Jersey. And let's talk other about places. other states in our sure. competitive position sure. when we continue this discussion sure. of question one sure. in a moment. Welcome back to our discussion of question one. Uh, which will be on your ballot in November. And again, watch for this booklet coming to your mailbox. It's got all sorts of great information about this and other ballot questions and everything you need to know for voting this fall. Our guests are Steve Crawford of Fair Share for Massachusetts and Jim Sturgios of the Pioneer Institute. Let's start with you again here, Steve. Before the break, we were talking about other states. Five other states, California, Connecticut, Maine, New Jersey, and New York, plus Washington, D.C., have this so-called millionaire's tax. What have the economic consequences been, and is that cause for concern at all? 
I'm not, I'm not an expert on those states, so I really can't, you know, I really can't address that. The other side likes to refer to other states, but California, New York, New York's our neighboring state. I mean, they've been hit recently with the, with the, the COVID pandemic, so that's, that's difficult to measure. But what I can say is that even when uh, the millionaire's tax passes, question one passes, our tax rate will be below seven or eight other states, below California, below New York, below below. Um, uh, New Jersey, very similar to um, Maryland, very similar to Vermont, as a matter of fact. Um, so there are uh, several other states who already have a higher rate than we will be at, and we're only covering millionaires. We're only covering people uh, a portion of income above a million dollars. Chip? So, I mean, there are lots of comparisons to be made there. I think Elon Musk was quoted once as saying California has put itself in a terrible position where you have the uh, great redwoods. The, the, the fang companies, the Facebooks and all that, that remain and fill the coffers with money. But everything under there is dying because people are, you've got 2,000, 3,000 companies a year that are leaving Connecticut, uh, California. Connecticut's much more to point. Connecticut's right next door, very similar to us culturally. Uh, some of the industries are very similar. Um, they started instituting a new differentiated tax in the 1990s, 2000s. And what we've seen as a result of that is from 2008, the last recession, great recession. Uh, since then, they were unable to even re recreate the number of jobs they had lost to even get to the 2007 level of employment. They're 48th in wage growth, 49th in job growth. Massachusetts had a stable tax environment. In fact, we lowered a tiny bit here and there. Uh, what did we get? Uh, what we got was we far outpaced the country in terms of job growth wage growth. Uh, we're generating billions of dollars in surplus. As I said before, we've actually doubled the size of government in about 13 years. Connecticut's only been able to muster to fuel about a 37, less than 40 percent increase in its state budget. Because the fact is economic growth is good for everyone, including for the ship of state. Rebuttal. But it hasn't been good for everyone. We have tremendous needs in this state. Absolutely. And it's built on an unfair tax system where the wealthiest pay a smaller share of their income than any, any other income group. That is a fact. Uh, it's not a and fact on the income tax. It's because of property taxes. It's because of sales taxes. If you totally. want to correct that, I would support you completely in lowering property taxes and sales taxes. We have plenty of revenue, billions that we can spend to address those issues. Economic growth is generating that. I was, we will responding, ourselves in the I was responding to your question, so mm -hmm. if you could just let yeah. me do that. I'm so sorry. That would, that would be great. But, but the, 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 what you just said confirms my point. It is a fact that the wealthy pay a smaller share of their taxes their income in state and local taxes. The fair share amendment will fix that. The very wealthy who make more than a million, this is how it works. If you make a million dollars a year, you don't pay any extra. You will pay an, a little extra on your second million. I don't think that's much to ask for people who have enjoyed this advantage. And the opposition, their focus is on permanently establishing this tax break for the wealthy so that they can enjoy the privilege that they have and the rest of us can settle for less. I want to clarify something. Are you forecasting an exodus if this passes of businesses we are and investors? We, we are already seeing, as I said, IRS data shows there's an exodus that's six times faster than 10 years ago, to, and largely to Florida and to uh, to New Hampshire. We would expect even more. But if I could just get to his point Go on ahead. this, which is um, you, a lot of buzzwords in there, a lot of privilege, a lot of this, a lot of that. But the fact is, but the fact is, economic growth has generated all kinds of billions that we can spend to address these issues. That's number one. Number two, when you say, well, you know, the second billion doesn't matter. When you are retiring and planning for 20 or 30 years without income, you know, if you're, if you're taking an extra 50,000, 60,000, 100,000 out of those people, it matters. That's money they put into their kids', their kids education, their kids' kids' education. It's what they do for their own long-term care. Who are you to say they don't have an extra 100,000? They played by the rules. They paid their mortgage. They worked. They probably didn't make more than $200,000, $250,000 as a family. But here you come and say, you're a millionaire. I mean, come on. Equal time. I, I'm, I'm not sure how to unpack that. I really don't because I, there's... 
again, you're trying to scare people. We are only taxing the richest, the, the richest people in this state. Yeah. And I will, and I, and, and I think the strongest argument that I can use is that is the the primary focus of your, uh, of their messaging is that millionaires will leave. Think about that argument. That is not the message. Think about think about that argument. You just made this argument, so let me just respond to it sure. if I may. Right? Millionaires will leave if we make our fa our tax system fairer. If, we, if you don't get, continue to give us this advantage, we will leave. That is, that is the message that, that your campaign is using. It is. It's on your, it's, it's on your website, Jim. I studied very carefully and prepared. Uh, on your, and it is a threat that if you don't continue this way, we will leave, take our money and, go, money and go somewhere else. So he asked the question, do you think people will leave? I hadn't mentioned it before that. Second thing I'd say is, if you want tax fairness, why is it you have to increase taxes and put the economy at risk? Why not lower, I, I'll work with you to lower property taxes. I will work with you to lower sales taxes. That's an easily fixable thing. You're going to the one thing that's not broken. The income tax is not regressive. No, it is progressive. If you, if you go and take a look at property taxes and sales taxes, they are regressive. Let's fix that. But no, you're looking for more, more, and more spending when we already have billions of dollars that even Massachusetts legislators who are very capable of spending are not able to spend. Jim, you Go may ahead. be the only person in this state that the only, thinks the only thing that's broken is our tax system. It is broken. Oh, I know But that. our transit system yep. is broken. Yep. Our transportation sure. system is broken. Our education system is broken. I agree with you that. Cannot afford to send, you cannot afford to send your kid to, to state college here anymore. Kids in Lynn and Lawrence, and I've been to these schools, they're schools that, have, that are over 100 okay. years old. We need to do something about that. Families are struggling, and for you to say that that's the oh, that 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 the tax system is the only problem that they have not the money that. we raise is dedicated to fixing those problems uh, it, but it will not go to that first thing and second thing is if you want to go and fix those things I work every day on fixing the Boston public schools they're spending twenty eight thousand five hundred dollars per student if you think another thousand dollars is going to fix the Boston public schools you are selling something to the voters it's just not true it takes hard work to fix the schools it's not just a matter of let's spend some more money on salaries that's not I'm going not to saying do it. spending more money on salary. I didn't even mention salaries, although many teachers do need to be paid more. Agree and there's with that a, too. There, that's why we have a teeter, teacher shortage in cities and towns all across their state. They're giving people bonuses to sign up to be teachers. And, you, and, and, to, to, and you're saying we don't need any additional funding. We have billions in surplus. We have COVID money from the feds. Billions but that you, they have not even spent. They spent a fraction. They you, don't even know how to spend that. You so you're saying let's throw more money at you it. You can't plan budgeting on surpluses and federal aid. You, you, We've done very well with me, that. You can't, trust me, you can't do that. We've done very well. I've with had that. surpluses and I've had federal money in my business. Yeah. Right? There is. You cannot plan long term with just those funds. You need a long term revenue source. Right. And you'll turn us into Connecticut. Gentlemen, no, we you know. The, you're the only person who talks about Connecticut. I, I talked about California and New York and New Jersey, mm -hmm. vibrant, competitive states with, with Massachusetts, and you didn't even address that. All right, California gentlemen, did. we've got uh, just a couple minutes left. I'd like to split it evenly between you for a sort of a closing elevator pitch and also indicate uh, where people can go if they want to find out more about your position on this. We'll start with you, Jim. Uh, pioneerinstitute.org forward slash taxachusetts. Um, don't believe the hype. It's not going to go to education and transportation. That's what happened in many other states. And the legislature made very clear what its intentions are. This is not good for retirees, the tax on retirees and on small businesses. Uh, no matter what Steve wants to say about that, the data is very clear about that. The majority of people captured by this are people who are retiring or small businesses. Uh, finally, what I'd say is 25 states have cut tax in the last two years. There's competition after pandemic for talent. There's competition for business. If you don't think this is going to have an impact on where people locate, I think you're wrong. Thank you, Jim. Steve. John, thanks for having me. Jim, thanks for the spirit of debate. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. We can make things better with question one. We can make our tax system fairer. We can use that money and ded that's dedicated to transportation education to fix our schools, give our kids a better education, get commuters out of traffic and get people who are stuck on the orange line you know, to work on time. It doesn't have to be the way it is now. What's missing is a dedicated revenue source. 
Vote yes on question one. Go to fairsharema.org. And on, sept on November 8th, Tuesday, November 8th, please vote yes on question one. Gentlemen, thank you both. Very good job. Appreciate you being here. And thank you very much for joining us. I want to invite you to stay with WBZ TV and CBS News Boston all autumn long for the city's best political reporting and analysis. Then cast your vote and watch it count with complete local and national coverage right here on Tuesday, November 8th.